testosterone levels peak in youth followed by an age-related decline. So with that in mind, with the goal of resisting the age-related decline, which factors are associated with higher testosterone? One factor is BMI, as a BMI greater than 22.5 is associated with lower testosterone. And that's what we'll see here. So on the left, we've got BMI categories. In the middle, we've got the N or the sample size that corresponds to each of the BMI categories. And note that this study included about 12,000 men within the 25 to 85 year age range with an average age of 60. And then on the right, we've got the average testosterone level for each of these BMI category groups. And what we can see is that men who had BMIs less than 22.4, that was associated with the highest levels of testosterone. And then as BMI increased from 22.5 and higher, that was significantly associated with lower levels of testosterone. For example, for men that were in the 22.5 to 24.9 BMI category, average testosterone was 17.6 nanomolar. And then for men that had a, an average BMI of 37.5 or higher, that was associated with a significantly lower testosterone level of 11.4 nanomolar. And we can see the association for BMI with testosterone uh, represented visually as shown by the red arrow. Now, data from one study is nice, but what do the multitude of studies show? So other studies have also identified similar associations for BMI with testosterone, one of which is shown here. And this study included 16,000 men. And note that when, when I show data in a video, I always look for the largest sample sizes, which may be representative of the true population-based average. And I should mention too that I'm not, I've tried to use LLMs and chatbots to generate or provide these data and almost never uh, am I able to find these studies there. So uh, I, I'm still, I still have a job. All right, so in this study, this included uh, men in the age range from 40 to 70 years with an average age of 55. And the story is similar to what I just posted. So men that had the lowest BMI in Q1, the first quintile, and unfortunately, somehow this paper was published without them publishing the actual BMI values in each quintile. Like was it 26, was it 22? It's just not in the paper. So all we can say is that for men that were in the lowest quintile of BMI, that was associated with the highest level of testosterone. And then as BMI increased all the way down to Q5, that was significantly associated with lower testosterone. And once again, we can see that represented visually. So higher BMI, that's significantly associated with a lower testosterone. Lower BMI, that's associated with higher testosterone. But note that we can subdivide BMI and go even further. And a higher body fat percentage is associated with lower testosterone. And that's what we'll see here. So for men that were the leanest in this study of about 16,000 people, so they were in the first quintile for or lowest level of body fat percentage, that was associated with the highest levels of testosterone. And then as whole body fat percentage increased, that was associated, significantly associated with lower levels of testosterone. And we can see that again, visually. Now we can further subdivide the body fat percentage too, as all body fat is not the same. There's visceral fat that surrounds organs, which reduces lifespan, at least in rats. And if you missed that video, I'll link to it in the right corner. And also subcutaneous fat, which is the fat located just below the skin. So are visceral and or subcutaneous fat associated with testosterone? So starting with the data for visceral fat, so men that had lowest levels of visceral fat, and here too, they didn't report the actual numbers, it's just in quintiles, that was associated with the highest levels of testosterone. And then as visceral fat increased, that was associated with lower levels of testo testosterone. And once again, we can see that visually represented. So higher visceral fat, that's associated with lower testosterone. So what about subcutaneous adipose tissue? So in this case, they looked at abdominal levels, so fat below the skin in the abdominal region. And here, actually, the, the story becomes somewhat interesting because I expected this to be mostly a visceral fat story, not necessarily subcutaneous, but the story is similar. Men that had lowest, the lowest levels of abdominal subcutaneous adipose tissue, that was associated with the highest levels of testosterone. And then as subcutaneous fat increased, that was significantly associated with lower levels of, of testosterone. And again, we can see that represented visually. So from these two studies, we can see that for men that had higher BMIs, higher body fat percentage, higher visceral and or subcutaneous fat, that was associated with lower testosterone. So those data suggest that if the goal is to keep testosterone relatively high, leanness and keeping body fat, visceral fat, and 
uh, subcutaneous fat, or at least the abdominal subcutaneous fat relatively low, may be a part of the story for resisting testosterone's age-related decline. But those data are associations. So if BMI and a higher body weight reduce testosterone, so now we're going to investigate a little bit of causation, does weight loss increase testosterone? So we're going to take a look at one of those studies that's shown here with the average testosterone change on the y-axis plotted against the percent weight change. And this is a four-year weight change for a longitudinal study. So men that had uh, blood samples over a four-year span. And this study included about 2,700 people within the 40 to 79-year age range. And what we can see is that the greater the weight loss, the larger the, t the testosterone increase. So for example, for men who were able to lose 15% of their body weight, starting body weight, that was associated with about a 7 nanomolar higher level of testosterone. Conversely, the greater the weight gain, that was significantly associated with a lower testosterone level. So for example, for men that gained 15% more body weight, that was significantly associated with about a 6 uh, nanomolar decrease for testosterone. So collectively, these data suggest that, again, leanness may be a big part of the story for helping to resist the age-related decline for testosterone. But this is just one part of the story. Uh, can other factors impact testosterone more than leanness? And I'm not trying to say in this video that leanness and having a low body fat percentage is the whole story. Obviously, exercise is going to contribute to that, and I plan on exploring that story in future videos. If you've ever wondered what's optimal for biomarkers, well, I've created a video just for you. So this is a 95-minute video that lives exclusively on Patreon that covers the 27 biomarkers shown here with 40 published references. So rather than what's optimal based on reference ranges, which say nothing about aging or all-cause mortality data trends, if you're interested in knowing what may be optimal, this data may be for you. And if you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, I post twice, at least twice a day for each of these or for these five tiers as shown there. And before you go, we've got a whole bunch of discount and affiliate links that you can use to test yourself that can help support the channel, including ultalabtest.com, which is where I get the majority of my blood tests, the clearly filtered water filter, which I use every day and I'm going to continue to use, at-home metabolomics or microbiome composition, NAD testing with Genfinity, epigenetic testing, at-home blood testing with Cyfox Health, which includes ApoB, but also the DNA methylation test Grimage, green tea, diet tracking with chronometer, or if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that with the website, buy me a coffee. And I should mention everything here on the screen is stuff I'm currently using or have used in the past. Or if you'd like to wear the Conquer Aging or Die Trying brand, as I've got on here, that link and all of the other links will be in the video's description. Thanks for watching. Hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.